Thank you to both Michaels. Um, as Michael said, I'm going to be talking about a critical view of safety. It seems I've been studying this for a long time. There are um, three attributes to the critical view of safety, as you know. Um, the first is a complete clearance of the paddocystic triangle, but not necessarily seeing the bile duct, the common paddock or common bile duct. Uh, two and only two structures going into the gallbladder and the cystic plate um, visible for uh, about a third of the distance. Yeah, the cystic, the critical view of safety is based on the method of ductal identification that we use in open cholecystectomy in which we took the uh, identified putatively cystic structures, then took the whole gallbladder off the cystic plate, and there was only two structures going in, and that's uh, secure identification. This is identical, uh, but we don't take the whole gallbladder off because the gallbladder tends to twist and turn and then laparoscopically, and it's harder to clip the structures. But um, it's very important to demonstrate this portion of the cystic plate because <clears throat> um, when you get to the critical view, it should be secure in your mind that there's nothing left to do except to take the rest of the gallbladder off the cystic plate. If there's other things that you have to do, you've not reached the critical view. The critical view should be thought of as a method of target identification. Uh, it's not a method of dissection, although it's achieved through dissection. There are good um, uh, analogies to think of when you talk about target identification. One of them is in hunting, and uh, various states have these regulations, and it says that a hunter never uh, bases identification uh, on um, uh, what appears to be an appendage of an animal. It has to have the unobstructed view of the head and torso. The reason is, is that uh, Maine wants you to shoot the deer and not shoot the person because what looks like legs uh, of an animal can be legs of a person. But what looks like the head and torso uh, of an animal does not look like the head and torso of a person. So that's secure target identification. There are other uh, analogies as well, but the critical view of safety is target identification. Now to this audience, I'm really not going to talk about dissection techniques because you're an audience of minimally invasive surgeons and you know how to do dissection, but I'll talk to you what I think we should emphasize when we're teaching residents about this. First of all, a size of structures. We should teach that the size of structures is highly variable and not dependable as a way of identification. The common bile duct can have a diameter of less than three millimeters, and a duct bigger than five millimeters is not usually the cystic duct, but it can be if the stone passes through it. Therefore, identifying structures by size alone can be misleading. There are many anomalies in the port of hepatis, and we've already heard of this. In terms of cholecystectomy, the really important anomaly is the aberrant low-lying right um, bile duct, which may be segmental or sectional, or even be the right hepatic duct. It's this duct here, which we've already seen th before this morning. I'm sorry, the mouse is not, does not want to work for me. There it is, right there. So uh, what are the strategies that avoid uh, um, injuries to aberrant ducts when you're dissecting for the critical view? And, and that is, don't have a perceived notion of where structures lie. In fact, this is true for any operation. Uh, in fact, have the mindset that aberrant ducts may lie in the area of dissection. And since they're very small, it's important to divide small pieces of tissue at a time when operating in the paddocystic triangle. I teach my residents not to divide anything bigger at one time than the smallest thing that they don't want to cut. So divide small pieces of tissue at a time. If you divide big pieces of tissue and there's an aberrant duct in it, the first thing you may find is you're looking at the end of an aberrant duct. Carry the dissection to the critical view of safety before making conclusions what the ducts are. This has already been mentioned several times. Ruvier sulcus, the bile duct, the common bile duct is below Ruvier sulcus, and if you go below this level, the chances are that you could be sorry because that's where the common bile duct lies. To do the um, dissection of a paddocystic triangle for a critical view. I think it's important to have the ability to dissect from behind as well as in front. This is well known. Perhaps not emphasized enough, but worthy of emphasis is the fact that dissection should be at the inferior border of the um, uh, gallbladder 
or the, uh, both from the front and the back. This avoids injury to aberrant ducts if one is dissecting out in this region where an aberrant duct can come into the cystic duct. So it's like dropping a curtain down when you do the dissection. Um, again, only thin, small uh, pieces of tissue should be divided. There are um, a number of different techniques of dissection in terms of the use of instruments, L-hooks, pushers, curved dissectors, pulling or pushing with a clamp. You're all familiar with these. Uh, I think it's useful uh, in achieving, all of these techniques are useful in achieving the critical view of safety. Uh, there, uh, I think, will be um, uh, demonstrations of this in the final product that comes out of safe cholecystectomy. There are, um, we, we put uh, demonstration videos of these uh, on YouTube a couple of years ago. To see them, just go on YouTube and look at the culture of safety in cholecystectomy, and there's a bunch of videos there on how to use all of the different instruments to get to the critical view of safety. Now, I want to talk about other aspects of the critical view of safety for a few moments because I think they're important. The question is, what is a level uh, of evidence that the critical view of safety is um, uh, effective in preventing bile duct injury? Is there level one in, in, uh, evidence? Well, bile duct injuries have a low incidence, that is three or four or a thousand, but they're common because of the large number of cholecystectomies performed. But it's important to remember this is a very low incidence uh, of a uh, problem. It's only important because we do so many cholecystectomies. It's also important, however, because it's our injury. It's iatrogenic. I'm not suggesting that, it, that, that it's negligence, but it still is something that happens with an operation. So we have to be aware of that. To do a randomized control trial, uh, 4,500 patients per arm would be required to detect a difference in bile duct injury rates of 0.1% versus 0.4% with a significance of 0.05. In other words, although there's a fourfold difference in outcome, the actual incident of the event is so low that a huge number of patients would be required. So what's the evidence that critical view of safety works? Well, there are papers amounting to 6,000 cases in the literature, where in which you would expect somewhere in laparoscopic cholecystectomy around 25 bile duct injuries without a bile duct injury due to misidentification. Also, Although no um, uh, randomized control trial is um, possible, based on case series registries, the critical view of safety is effective when used by experts who understand its rationale and who have the technical expertise to do the dissection. But the other evidence that it's effective is that in studies of bile duct injuries from operative notes and videos, critical view of safety has not been implicated in bile duct injuries. I think this may be the best proof because if you look at the um, uh, papers by David Off and Branham from Duke, who had videos and saw the, showed how bile duct injuries occur. They didn't occur when people were doing the critical view of safety. The, also, in our operative notes, which um, Dr. Pucci just referred to, the operative notes we've received from surgeons, it's not the critical view. Academic Medical Center published essentially the same thing in 650 cases of bile duct injury. There is something which I call a pseudo-critical view. Frequently, the term critical view is dictated in operative notes when, in fact, it has not been achieved, as can be appreciated in videos, in the details of the operative notes. And that's because a lot of surgeons think that the infundibular technique is the critical view of safety technique. It's, they're confused about what the critical view of safety technique is. You've already seen this slide by Dr. Pucci. You, you know what the infundibular view technique is and how, under certain circumstances, a surgeon gets fooled because they definitely think that this is the cystic duct. In fact, when you talk to surgeons on the telephone afterwards and you tell them the common hepatic duct was, and they say, I don't understand how the common hepatic duct could possibly have been cut because what I cut was definitely the cystic duct. It was coming right out of the gallbladder. There's a problem with the critical view of safety technique. It's not usually recorded, so there's no visual evidence that it's been achieved, and it needs to be recorded. And um, we've shown a way that it can be recorded through what we call doublet photography, two pictures, one from the front, one from the back. We've shown that it can be recorded accurately, and we're working on this, and hopefully at some time in the future, this will become part of the operative note just in the same way that gastroenterologists take pictures when they do ERCPs and, and, and gastroscopies. 
We're working on that. Uh, the critical view of safety works because it emulates a proven way of ductal identification, and it, but it also works because it's demanding. The, the uh, infundibular text technique is much easier, but the critical view of safety works because it's demanding, and when you can't get to the critical view of safety, then the surgeon starts to think, well, there's something strange going on here or unusual, and perhaps we have to do something else. So this comes to knowing what to stop. Knowing when to stop is part of the culture of safety in cholecystectomy, and it's related to the critical view of safety. So there are uh, signs of bad conditions in elective cholecystectomy, and some of these have been gone over again. I'm not gonna read them all to you. They're clearly on this slide. And in acute cholecystitis, um, Dr. G went over these. These are, these are from the Tokyo guidelines. So, so surgeons trying to get the critical view need to be aware of these danger signs in acute and chronic cholecystitis and what the bailouts are. It's so very important to know what the bailout is if you can't get to the critical view of safety. Do a cholangiogram, convert, get help from a colleague, and we'll talk a second about these bailout procedures, but Mike Brunt's gonna talk about them in more detail. So I can teach how to do the very difficult cholecystectomy in one word. Don't. Don't do the very difficult cholecystectomy. It's unnecessary and it's dangerous. Avoidance of a biliary injury in a culture of safety of cholecystectomy, and cholecystectomy requires three elements. It requires trying to get to the critical view of safety, plus recognizing danger and knowing when to stop, plus knowing how to bail out. Those are, that, that's what leads to safety. This should not be your preoperative plan. If there's a fire, get the heck out. You should have a much more explicit plan going into an operation uh, when the conditions may be difficult. And it depends upon what the conditions are. At the very worst, the gallbladder can't, ever, can't even be found. Send them to a tertiary care center and let the tertiary care center worry about it. If you're in Missouri, send them to Dr. Brunt. He loves these cases. It, sometimes only the dome of the gallbladder can be exposed. Then you would do a cholecystostomy. But very often, you can see the whole side of the gallbladder, but you cannot dissect the hepatocystic triangle. In these cases, one should consider doing a subtotal cholecystectomy. We're going to hear more about this. Our recent paper that came out of the safe cholecystectomy group talks about new names for these because one of the reasons that people don't use these procedures is that they're not really well described and the terminology for them is confusing. Partial, subtotal, we don't really know what we're talking about but this paper kind of straightens out the terminology. It's, so there's two main types. I won't go into it because Dr. Brunt's going to talk about it. Thank you very much.